Hello beloved brethren, today is the 26th of June 2024 here in Australia and I pray we are all standing steadfast, amen. I have a little pussycat with me. Uh, I hope he doesn't distract you and me. <laughs> so this is part two of Time No Longer. And I am praying that I can actually uh, pass this message on eloquently and concisely. Amen. So we're going to see uh, where the Father highlights the number uh, 36. Uh, we'll go to Revelation 7, and we know that this is the um, 144,000. So we'll just read it quickly. Uh, verse 2, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them that were sealed, and there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad was sealed 12,000. So that is the third. Stop that. That, get there. that is 36,000 in one verse. And in the next verse, it's 36,000. In the next verse, 36,000. And the fourth verse, 36,000. So our father blocks them into uh, three groups of 12 over four verses. Now, obviously, that is very significant. Because four is our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He is the fourth servant candle who feeds the other six and our father you know um puts them into groups of twelve thousand. so he's really emphasizing thirty six thousand. so that is one way that our father really highlights the three gatherings that are in and through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, which makes up, of course, the 144,000. Now we know that if we go to Revelation 21, that it is the temple of God that um cometh down from god as a bride adorned for her husband so new jerusalem the holy city which we are obviously all looking forward to but of course it is made up of the three gatherings and the fourth or the first one is of course our lord jesus christ himself and so if you follow along with Humble Seeker, then none of what I'm saying is, um, is new to you. But if you have not followed along with Humble Seeker and you just happen to come up across this video, then Michael, Humble Seeker of Truth, he does explain uh, throughout his videos but if you message him, then he would lead you to the video that has all the information about 
the four walls of the Holy Temple, New Jerusalem, made up of three gatherings and our Lord Jesus Christ being the first fruit. So, when the Father showed the dream of the 36, the number 36 written in the dust, <clears throat> he asked me a question and he said, how many times is the number two written in the Gospels? So I counted them through the concordance. At that time, I did not have a phone, so I manually did it. And I triple, quadruple checked. Uh, so Matthew is 36, Mark is 18, Luke is 28, John is 14 times. So the number two is written that many times. So we can see easily that that is divided uh, in two or divided by two. So this is what our father was showing me. Unbeknownst to me, I had not come across Humble Seeker at that stage. So I did not know what had been shown to Michael. So these are two examples of how our father hi has highlighted his uh, authority of the nail and how it um, and how it represents uh, his family in and through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So, the title of the last video was Time No Longer. Now, we know that as we shared yesterday, in part one, that the crab about the crabwood glyph and the message that was written in the crabwood glyph, uh, saying that there's much pain but still time. Believe there is good out there. Um, we oppose deception. Conduit closing bell sound. So you see. When the earth rang like a bell, which we know was the 11th of November 2018, there was still time. Now our father is, now that he has revealed this, our father is saying that there is time no longer. Now, What does that mean exactly? Now, I want you to just keep in mind that we, the measure of the temple, the, the measuring, which basically is what the number 36, the authority of the nail, um, led to the measuring of the temple the 144,000, okay, the 12 tribes of Judah, which make up the 144,000 in, in 36,000 lots, you know, four groups of 36,000, okay? So if you keep all that in mind, it is the measuring of the temple of God, I want to go to Revelation 10. Beg your pardon. I 
It's almost there. All right, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. Now, once again, if you have followed along with Humble Seeker, then the rainbow is an ark and our father depicts us as ark angels. And we can just go straight to here to the circle divided in the midst to see that it is two arcs and it is the family of God that it represents. You know, you can go to the Ark of the Covenant um, but we're not going to get into that. And the menorah, of course, the menorah. Um, and he had in his hand a little book open, verse 2, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Now the seven thunders, Michael has discussed that in the past, but I have a small portion to add. Because of what our father has shown that um, is directly related to the wisdom given to Michael. The, it is part of what the seven thunders uttered. Now the angel, the archangel here is saying that there's time no longer. And I am saying that there's time no longer because the Father is saying that. So why? Why? Because the servants in Revelation 7, the servants of God have been sealed And so our Father is showing to me that that is why there is time no longer because it is done. The servants of God have been sealed in their foreheads. So once again, the message that was written in the crop, the crabwood glyph crop, which was written in um, you know in a field, so it's in dust, right? The number thirty six that I saw written by the finger of God, was written in the dust. And if you, you know, want to sort of see that, I mean, dust also represents um, the flesh. You know, man goes to, you know, dust. Anyhow, um... That is why there was time, but there is no time now. 
because the servants have been sealed. You see, so... The angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, which is the first four trumpets. The angels sounding the first four trumpets, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. <coughs> So that has been done and it is, you know, I, none of us know when our Lord Jesus is going to appear. We don't know the day nor the hour. Um, but what is being shown by the Father is that there is time no longer. Now, when we go to Revelation 10, um, before I continue, I need to share a dream from years ago. In that dream, I was um, in a foyer of a building, a magnificent foyer. And there was a, a beautiful elevator. And at the elevator door, there was a doorman. And I walked over to the doorman. And he took out of his pocket a little white um, card. Like a business card. And it had gold beautiful gold writing and I was told to eat it and the the doorman handed it to like towards my face and it came out uh, of his hand and in mid-air the little card scrolled up into a little scroll and I was told to eat it and I opened my mouth and it went into my mouth and I ate it. And then I went up the elevator into, you know, the clouds and I arrived at this magnificent room full of round tables and people at these tables all, all drinking champagne and there was listening to the speaker speaking all eyes were transfixed towards the voice that i heard now i was new in the faith when this dream was shown to me and so i was unknowing that Ezekiel and John were both told to eat a little book or a little scroll. And both were to prophesy. And obviously the little book is the word of God. Hence, in our mouth, it tastes like honey for sweetness, and yet it can make our belly bitter with all the severity and the, the sorrow that can come with the understanding of the word of God. Yet there is joy, obviously. So Ezekiel and John were both told to eat the little book, the little scroll. 
And this is what was given to me. So, in Revelation 10, which we just read that the archangel um, lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that there should be time no longer. He had a little book in his hand. I'm sorry. Uh, and he had in his hand, verse 2, a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. And John is told, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Thus, uh, Revelation 11. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So we know that that is Jacob's trouble, forty-two months. And John has been given a reed like unto a rod to measure the temple. And once again, the information that I am sharing today is the measuring of the temple. And it is a measuring. Uh, let's go to Revelations 21. And he measured the wall thereof uh, um. 17 verse 17 and he measured the wall thereof and 144 cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel according to the measure of a man the number of man is six It is three vavs, and the vav being the nail in the Hebrew. Six times six is 36. This is the last two gatherings that the Father shows through Phi. And you see, he is emphasizing we see here this crabwood glyph that was written in the crops with the rectangle and the circle divided in the midst. The 59 resolutions that are in the rectangle, the 33 resolutions that touch the circle in the midst, um, divided by phi is 3666.75 something or other but 3666. The, this is um, what our father is, is showing. And remember the old stone building that split in two when the ear-splitting earthquake occurred and there was chaos. And my family and I, we were escaping and we, you know, were blocked. The path was blocked, right? By a Middle Eastern man in military uniform with the gun slung over his shoulder. You know, we, I passed by him so closely 
that he, you know, he smirked at me as if to say, there's nothing you can do about it now. And then I, my family and I, we disappeared. Now that is what our father is emphasizing now is that the, um, and I know I've repeated this a thousand times recently, but I just pray that we, you know, we really receive this. Because we see the Middle East is at war. We are still here. But we're in the dream we pass by. I pass by the, the Middle Eastern military man and our shoulders brushed. That's how close. And he represents the adversary. And the coming Antichrist. And when we go, that's why he smirked. There's nothing you can do about it now because you're not here. You're gone. But he is wrong because our father is going to send some of us back to preach the gospel of the kingdom, to, to shine a, a light in gross darkness, in the shadow of death. So, none of this, none, none of what is shown is from me. None of it. It is the Father and in and through his son within me, the spirit. And it all complements what Michael has been shown. I pray that we see and I know that it can be confusing but it is magnificent the way that our father portrays his family in and through his son and it can be seen in the menorah and the Ark of the Covenant and, you know, the rainbow itself. It can be seen in the Tree of Life. Which, contrary to what is believed, the Tree of Life is actually looks like this. And it has magnificent flowers on it as cups that sit up. And the father said to me, Turn it upside down and you have a menorah. And that is how the father first and foremost showed me the, the circle divided in the midst. And in the dream where I saw the tree of life, I was walking with Jesus in a most beautiful open garden. These are things that the seven thunders uttered and I'm sure that's why the father showed the dream of the, the role, 
the little scroll that I was to eat. Amen. I pray that this is encouraging to you, beloved brethren. And I pray that, um, you know, any minute we, our Lord will appear for us and we can go. I love you all, beloved brethren. Stand fast. Our Lord is coming. Amen. God bless us, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.